Welcome back to another episode of Cheers PA Beer Talk. I'm your host, Malik Stark. And today we'll be talking to Susan and Matt Dunn from Desperate Times Brewery. Again, follow us on all social media at cheers underscore PA and look out for new episodes every other week. And I want to give a special thank you to the PLCB for making the show possible. And without further ado, Susan, Matt. Hi. Hello. How are you all doing today? Great. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to, first of all, how did Desperate Times become Desperate Times Brewery? Oh, wow. That's a that's a big story. It started back in, the name comes from back from 2008 when we were living in Florida. Okay. And I was pregnant and Matt just had lost his job. It was in the downturn of the economy and he was in land development. And after searching for five months for a job, he found one, decided he needed to move out of state to find a job. So luckily found one within a month. And so we were off to Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. And then from there, that company took us to Pennsylvania, but hence the name Desperate Times. That's that's where that came from. And I had just gotten that his first uh, homebrew kit. And that's how it all started. And he can go from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we always hear stories from uh, people saying that like their first time or first introduction to brewing was home brewing. So, uh, I mean, I'm glad to see that that's the, that's the trend that continues with like everybody that you've talked to. So uh, you said from Florida to Arkansas. So you all have been pretty much around the country. Yeah, yeah that was all within two years of knowing each other. Yeah. We just met in February of 2008 and moved to Arkansas in 2008 and Pennsylvania in 2010. Yeah, it took six years to open. It's not one thing that you just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to open a brewery. And you open it that day. Yeah. Matt went to school. He took a lot of classes at the Siebel Institute in Chicago. The American Brewers Guild in Vermont. And just a lot of studying that went into it. And then all the red tape that it takes to get to open a brewery. So it wasn't until 2016 when we opened then. We started in 2010. There's not a lot of breweries in that Carlisle area and Desperate Tom's is always like a top one as far as people that I know that lives around there. Yeah, we have won um, nine medals between the Great American Beer Fest and the U.S. Beer Open since we've opened. And three from the mm -hmm. PA Flavor at farm the, the farm show. Yeah, I think that might have been the first time that I heard of um, Desperate Tom's too. It was probably at the Brewers Fest at the farm show. As far as being in the brewery itself um, over in Carlisle, like... How's that atmosphere and everything there? It's good. There's actually, let's see, two other breweries plus a third one opening this year. So it's becoming more of a destination for people that live outside the area then come here into the multiple breweries at the same time. And then we get a lot of uh, car show people. Mm. So that's a big, big event for us every summer. They're starting up in April and go through October. But there's a lot happening around this town. Are you, Matt, are you still doing most of the brewing now, or is that? Yes, I have one other person that helps me out, but yes, that's what I like to do. He does all the brewing, and I do all the other stuff. But I have yeah. help. I have help. <laughs> so are you all brewing pretty much every week, a few times a week now? Depending on the uh, week, but we'll do probably two to three times a week. And I assume that it's, I think whenever I spoke with you, you said that we are neighbors on the shelf. Yes, we are. That's actually my job is I'm out selling. I sell beer to restaurants, bars, distributors, all over. We're in Wegmans, Giant, on tap at the Senators, the Barnstormers. The Stormers now. Oh, the Stormers, excuse <laughs> me. Yes, they changed their name this year. And our other, we have another rep as well. So we're all the way out to Philly with our beer. Oh, that's amazing. And we self-distribute. So it's a lot of work. As far as like self-distributing, like is that, I assume that you all are staying, you have to stay busy if you're in all those places. Yes, we do. We have to really watch our inventory 
and um, make sure because our beers are minimum three weeks to six weeks to brew. So we always have to make sure we have enough for the demand. What's some of you all's uh, favorite beer right now that you all make? Well, the staple I always like is our Black Forest Schwartz beer. That one's always one of my favorite ones. And you don't find a lot of Schwartz beers around. No, I don't think I've had one at all, but now I have something to look for. And my favorite just went off tap, which was the strawberry milkshake. <laughs> it's an IPA, but it's not what you think when you think of a milkshake or an <laughs> IPA. And it's it's not real hoppy, but it's it's hoppy, but it's not extremely hoppy over the top. I'm not a big hoppy girl, but it's got a strawberry, light strawberry flavor, and it's really good. Is that more so like a, a winter, Tom, winter fall beer for you all? Usually we were going to do it during the summer, but we did do another batch because a lot of people asked for it back. So we just uh, got offline with it. We've done a blood orange milkshake as well, but we'll probably bring it back here in the summer when it starts heating up a little bit. We just came out with our Irish red ale and that's super popular. Yeah. I mean, that's perfect. i in with the uh, St. Patty's Day. <laughs> yeah. We're hoping it'll go through. It'll last through April. It didn't last year. So we brewed more this year. But it's out and about already. So with you all doing this uh, for, I would say that's pretty long if you all opened in 2016. Like, how have you seen like the brewery and the beer industry like change? Definitely slowing down. <laughs> but I think there's a market correction with all the breweries that did open up. Now you see a lot closing, but it was bound to happen with all the breweries opening. We're still busy which is good. We've seen an uptick recently. And you all opened uh, well well before COVID. And I've talked to a, a few breweries who like opened during that. And I know that from working at Zero Day, like they had to open like a year after that, at least a new tap room. Like did that boost you up, slow you down as far as like to-go beer or anything like that? It kind of forced us to get out and about more to stores and distributors. So we did obviously a lot more canning during that time and ended up buying a canning line to keep up with that part. The normal C has not come back. A lot of the uh, grocery stores tastings aren't as popular as they used to be where you would go to the, the store and you could sample the beer when they would have tastings on Friday or Saturdays. Um, and a lot of distributors don't do it either. So like, I know I've seen you at a bunch of festivals and stuff like that. How do you keep up with that? <laughs> do you have to outsource? Do you just have people who like your beer to just work that for you so you can keep up with it? Um, we do have some friends that love to work them and do them for free. And then we also have our other rep. He does a lot of them. So that works out well for us. We have a lot coming up. And then there are several that fall on car shows. So those are difficult. We can't participate in them because we just don't have the staffing. You all have a restaurant too, am I right? Yes, we have. Um, we're, it's a 7,800 square foot brewery. with It's, it's a 3,000 square foot tap room with a full menu, mainly a German fare. Um, nothing is deep fried. We don't have a deep fryer. We just air fry and sandwich press, things like that. And for the most part, almost everything is homemade, even down to we pound out our own pork for our schnitzels, grate our own cheddar cheese for our beer cheese sauce. It's a lot of work, but the outcome is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. I can't remember what I had, but I don't usually uh, leave anything left after I eat. <laughs> <laughs> And as far as the tap room there, what do you want people to know about Desperate Tons? Well, we're in a 1201 Carlisle Springs Road, which is right adjacent to the fairgrounds. Uh, we do have seating for 100 inside and about another 50 to 60 outside in our beer garden, which we opened a couple of years ago. And that one is pet friendly. And we are very family friendly. We have games, chalkboards and everything for kids. A couple of big 70 inch TVs to watch sports and all that fun stuff. But it's a good atmosphere. We have a lot of regulars that come in all the time. So it's very friendly. Yeah. We just started our mug club again, our fourth annual mug club, March 1st, and it sold out quickly. Um, so that's always a fun event as well. If you can get in on that one, we have specials all the time and just different activities going on. 
trivia on Thursdays at seven o'clock. If you don't make a reservation, you won't get in, <laughs> but that's about it. Yeah. And we're coming out with some ideas, some really fun ideas for the summer and spring for the beer garden. And your beer garden, is that on the back side or the... It's on the side where the parking lot is. So we have two entrances, the front of the building and the side of the building. The side of the building is where most people come in and that's where it is right there. With the beer garden, I assume that you see a lot of dogs and because you said it was pet friendly. So I'm sure that's a hot place in the summertime. Yeah, so we have Pup Club Monday. On Mondays, if you bring your dog, you get a little treat for your dog with uh, some whipped cream and a dog bone. But we always have dog bones and dog bowls of, for water for the dogs out there. And we don't put any glass out in the beer garden. Everything's plastic or paper. So nobody can get, no animals can get cut if something were to break. I know you had already spoken of uh, the Irish Red and that you had made that last year as well and didn't make enough for how many people liked it. Have you been tinkering with new beers, like any new recipes that you are excited about? Uh, we've just been experimenting with their Double Galaxy Hazy IPA. So we have a new batch coming out probably in the next couple of weeks. And then, of course, we have our Pineapple Coach that always comes out in the April time frame. Because that's one that uh, Stormers like to put on tap in their craft beer deck. That's an easy drinker for the summer. We don't do a lot of fruity beers. The rest are mainly German or uh, regular beers, IPAs, things like that. We stay true to a lot of lagers, three IPAs, and we always have 12 beers on tap. That's a lot of brewing. I'm a huge uh, stout person, <laughs> so it's good to see that they're... Uh, like you'll all be carrying a lot of um, like lighter beers in the summertime because that is, I've been told by a lot of people, that's not the season for the beer I like. So we always keep it oatmeal stout online year round. <laughs> What's the feeling you want people to have whenever they come into your brewery? It's just a family friendly place. The servers are amazing. The food's delicious. The beard's a, beer is award winning. We just always try to make it a fun atmosphere. We have the big TVs, sports is always on. It's just a nice time, laid back, not stuffy. Yeah, if you sit at the bar somewhere, we'll strike up a conversation with you if you want to. So. People come in, everybody knows everybody, which is really nice. We have the activities for everybody. So it just feels like uh, the show Cheers and everybody knows your name. Yes. We do have Norm. We do have a Norm. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> You have a norm. Uh-huh, we do. As far as, like, activities, do you all run your own trivia and, like, themed events yourself? Because that's another thing on the plate for you all. No, we have, we hire somebody. We've had Trivia Steve for yeah. six, at least six years, every Thursday night. We've tried a few other things on Saturdays. We have Game Board Saturdays. We're coming out with... Well, the summer will be in spring, uh, cornhole, we have ladder ball, just different competitions like that. We'd love to do more, but the weather doesn't permit it. We do a lot of catering events, private parties. It's always fun at desperate times. You are all are right next to the fairground. Yes, right across from the fairground diner. And the car shows is there, like I assume that you had said that that brings in a lot of business for you. And I would assume like uh, the car people and brewery people like have to be the same. We have uh, two stands out on the, uh, the fairgrounds. So we have exclusive rights for their beer and we sell the beer out there. And actually this year is the 50th anniversary of Carlisle events. So we're doing a special label for one of the beers. It's the top selling beer during car shows. So we've, we've uh, collaborated with them and it'll be exciting to see a different uh, label for this beer out there. Well, yeah, I just want to uh, thank you all so much again for doing this. <laughs> sure. Sure. No problem. Thanks for having us. It's been great. Sure. I'll stop by there uh, pretty soon. Definitely would love to try that strawberry beer whenever you get that back. Yeah, let us know when you come. We'll have a beer with you. This has been another episode of Cheers Beer Talk. 
Uh, please follow us on all social media at cheers underscore PA and look out for new episodes every other Thursday. Cheers. 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 Cheers.